Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and this is the very last video um, from our series on how to make a paper mache cat. It's been taking me a long time to get done with this particular cat, but um, not necessarily because the steps were so difficult or complicated, just because there were a lot of other things in my life that I had to get done too. So um, quite a few days have passed before the very first video. If you haven't seen all of them, I hope you go out and find them either on my website, ultimatepapermache.com, or my YouTube channel, Ultimate Paper Mache. Just search for Paper Mache Cat and you'll find them. I think this, I think this is number six, if I'm probably should have looked that up before I started. Um, today we're going to uh, see how I finished up the kitty. Um, this process took a long time to get to because I added more paper mache clay to my cat than I would normally do, um, partly because she's just a really, really hairy cat. Uh, and I wanted a lot of texture, but I got a little carried away. Um, and so that took a long time to dry. I put her over a furnace vent, um, put a, a blanket over it to make it kind of a box inside so that there was blowing warm air and I left her there for about four days. So I wanted to make sure that it was completely dry all the way through before I even starting painting. And so let's, let's go ahead and see how this was done. I'm getting ready to paint my paper mache cat sculpture and as you can see, I'm getting lots of help. <laughs> I'm going to start by adding some gesso that has been colored. Um, <laughs> I'm really getting some help. Um, this is just the, the gesso recipe that is on my website. Up, uh, if you go up to paper mache recipes, uh, it's just joint compound and glue and a little bit of water. And I added some craft paint. Um, I used some uh, um, antique white and some burnt umber and I'm just using this for an underpainting I started out with the lightest colors first just kept trying to find a white that was close this is a mixture I'm using um, I'm going to consider it an underpainting it's burnt umber a little bit of black I, I should have used ultramarine blue, but I ran out. And um, just a smidgen of raw sienna, I believe. This cat is uh, supposedly um, part ragdoll and part uh, Siamese. I think it's the Siamese that yells all the time. So she has a, a, a lot of Siamese colors. The next step is to paint her points with some black and burnt umber mixed together. There's no white in this, of course. And this will go on her tail and up in her face area and her legs. Um, this is the only really, really dark parts of the cat. Now we just start working to uh, get some variety, um, adding a little bit of white to that bib over the um, white and yellow ochre. Um, and I mixed up the other colors together and just in various um, um, different mixtures using the same pigments of course but just in different um, uh, amounts so that I can get some variation on her back of her coat. The uh, paper mache cat actually ended up being a little bit darker than the real one but that's okay. I turned her sideways so that I could reach those eyes. I um, wanted to make sure that they were nice and white because I'm going to be using some transparent blue and I needed the white to be reflected back uh, through the blue that I'm going to be adding. And the before, uh, once the white was dry of course, then I go ahead and add the pupils. I like to do that first because it's a lot easier to fix the uh, boo-boos if you mess up that black area in the eye. It's a lot easier to fix it now rather than after you have the uh, the color on there exactly the way you want it and then um, put a piece of black in the wrong spot which I do all the time. When the black and white are both totally dry I go ahead and mix up some golden gel medium. It's a soft gel gloss so it's going to be really shiny and the first layer on the eye was uh, mixing with that a cerulean blue and just a very very small touch of Hansa yellow 
and as you can see it's very transparent. Uh, I'm going to go over the eyes several more coats, making sure that every coat is completely dry before I add the next one so that I can get a lot of transparency going on in there. And then um, after the uh, first layer, um, well actually probably two of those before you're seeing this one, I went ahead and added some thalocyanine blue to the cerulean blue, which is a much deeper color. And um, that's going to be the, the second or third layer. can't remember now how many I put on there. And then when that was dry, I added just a, a little bit of white to some thalocyanine blue and water, um, no gel medium in this particular one. And I went ahead and just put a little bit of it there um, on the bottom half of the eye. And when that was completely dry, I went ahead and added a um, little accent mark here, the reflection. Uh, that's white mixed with just a little bit of blue. And then it got to dry again. I used a hair dryer to speed things up just a little bit on the eye so that I could um, get things done a little bit more quickly. Okay, we're almost ready to put a, the final uh, glaze on this cat. I I know that the light has not been very good for this video. I do apologize for that. Um, can't really help it. <laughs> I don't really have a, a fancy professional studio all set up. Um, this is golden acrylic glazing liquid. I really like it, uh, especially for things like this where, where I want to put on um, meh. I just want to put on some color that will stay in the deepest parts. Just basically it's going to pull the color together, I hope. Um, and, and, um, and it should not change the very much. It shouldn't change the color of the cat. I'm not going to put any of this on the bib um, because it's going to be too dark. And I'm going to make it really dark. This is going to be, um, um, what is this, burnt umber and black that I'm going to be mixing in. So I now have my damp shop towels here. Uh, this is to make sure that I'm able to get all of the glaze off that I want to. And I really don't want much of it to show on the final piece. I'm, I'm just using it for highlights and, well actually for shadows, I think you call it. Um, so I really don't... Um, I, I want to make sure that there's something handy here before I ever put any glaze on there. And I didn't put enough of this because it isn't transparent enough yet. This is basically just a dark version of the colors that are already on here. No white added at all because that would that would really not work for this particular project. And this is how I'm doing it, just putting it on there. Kind of scary. And then just take it all off. As you can see, hopefully you can see, I'll pull that around. Even though I'm taking, I'm, I'm using this damp shop towel to uh, take it all off of the high points, it's still going to add just enough uh, of a color in those deeper parts. So it's going to, um, <laughs> hopefully it will make it look like I m made this cat so highly textured on purpose, <laughs> which is would definitely be a plus. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Like I said, I'm not going to put it on her bib because that needs to be white, but I'll put it everywhere else. And I'm also going to put it, I, I can't do this in front of the camera because I have to be really quick about it, but I am going to put it over those nice blue eyes and then I'll uh, wipe all of it off really fast. That does have the, um, where is it here, the, 
It's got this soft gel on there, so it's really slick on the eyes. So there should be none of this glaze left, but it will uh, make a real nice line around the eyes. Um, so I won't have to go in uh, by hand and paint that on. I'll go ahead and finish this up and I'll let you see how it turns out. This is done, um, but it's still wet. And the one thing that you have to be careful with if you're using the glazing liquid is that it, if you put it over any paint that is not yet totally dry, somehow or another the glazing liquid, liquid will liquefy your um, acrylic paint and it will basically, when you um, go to wipe off the acrylic glaze, you'll end up uh, removing all of the paint that's under it. So you have to make sure that everything is completely dry before using the golden glazing liquid. And you also want to make sure that you don't put any varnish or other paint over the acrylic glazing liquid before it's completely dry. So I'm not going to varnish this for probably, um, probably 24 hours at least. But I think she's done. Um, and this here, she's got nice blue eyes that really stand out. And uh, the, the glazing liquid, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it really did um, pull the colors together. And I put a lot of different colors, as you were watching me do, um, in this body area. Um, I, I didn't want it to look striped, you know, or, or blotchy, but um, every hair on this particular cat is probably five different colors, so it had to have a lot of color variations in the body. And in order to pull that together, I used the glazing liquid, and I think it really did help. So she's finished. She's all ready to uh, go sit on the windowsill, <laughs> watch her beetle, or whatever it is she's doing. I hope you enjoyed this whole series of videos about how to make a paper mache cat. Um, I hope it didn't take so long that you got the idea that uh, this was really, really hard because it really isn't. It just takes patience. So um, thank you very much for watching. Come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. Bye-bye.